Hi, I'm Zachary Fowler, and you're watching How to Make a Rustic Yurt Bunk Bed. So you cut down your poles from the woods, strip off all the small branches, bring them back in um, good size lengths, and the parts for the bed, might as well cut those when you're out there so it's easier to carry back. You can bundle them up and carry them back out of the woods like this. What I usually do is I cut one, and I use that as a template. It's just rustic furniture. And you use that to cut the other ones. Now what you see here is I've laid out the bed frame. And I have my short pole that goes at the back. So it fits up against the wall of the yurt. And the taller pole at the front. Those are my main frames for it. And these are the different floors. There's the bottom pole for the bottom of the bottom bunk crib area. And the top poles for the top edge of the crib. And the bottom bunk here again for the t for my um, four-year-old up higher, and then the other poles here at the top, uh, which will be above, to hold the canopy that goes over her bed when we tuck her in at night, and uh, and to give it more support. Next, I will cut the poles. I'll spread these out and cut the poles that go between. Now you've cut the shorter pieces for the side, same way as the top. Notice that I kept a small nub on one of them, so when that ends up at the front, that could be a little coat hanger thing. And uh, make sure you keep them short so that somebody can't skewer themselves on it, but just enough that you can definitely hang a coat or um, maybe uh, pajamas or something from it for the kids. Okay, before you tenon them, some of these may be uh, too wide for the one inch tenoning jig or they have um, a knot right where you would cut it. You want to take that over to your split and stump with a, um, like a carving axe or I use this uh, hewing axe on a short handle so I can get knock those down. And, uh, or you might have one that has a, uh, a crook in it and you want it to be straight, so you want to knock that down so when it goes into the tenning jig, your tenon, tenon comes out straight. It'll try, if there's too much material on one side, it'll try to wander off to the center of where that is, and you might want it here. But don't shave off too much, because um, it, then you might end up with your tenon being, having a flat spot on it or something, which wouldn't be the end of the world, but it, it won't be perfect and that might bug you, like it does me sometimes. So take them to your stump, and shave them down, the ones that are a little bit extra large. The tenoning jigs usually can handle quite a bit of uh, extra material. And uh, it's ready to go. This one's got a bit of a nub on it. So you take that off with your axe. Clean that right up. So that's ready to go into the tenoning jig. And then uh, also go over all of your pieces. It's for uh, This one's for kids. So you don't want too many of these nubs where they can scratch or hurt themselves on. You place it so that the nub is as if the old branch was facing downward and you nip it off with your axe. And then if you, uh, but leave it a little bit, still a little bit proud, right? And you want it to look a little better. At that point, you take all of your sticks. Once you've cleaned them up with the, the axe, put them in your uh, shaving horse or uh, have a friend sit on them so you can take a draw knife to it and clean them up. All nice. You work it in one direction and then you work it in the other direction because if you don't, it'll cut into the grain and, uh, and peel up extra grain. And once that's done, you're ready to go in and ten in your cross members that are gonna go into the uh, mortises. 
there you have it. All right, so the first thing you want to do once you get inside to your mortising jig, or you can even do this outside, you sh I strap it to my bench. I use a, uh, a good uh, Milwaukee drill, something solid. You don't want some Home Depot thing that's going to bust apart on you because it really takes a toll on it using this large uh, mortising bit. This is uh, this says inch and a uh, half, but that's uh, um, the one inch one is what I have in there. I just keep them in the same box and uh, works great. Fire it up. Take a piece that you're not using as a test piece to get it set for the right depth. You're going to drive her all the way in there and then you're going to take it back out and you're going to cut off what you need to go in there as a spacer block so that you don't drive it in too far. This is one I did in the past and you can see it's a certain length and I want it to be that same length again. So I'll cut the spacer to fit so that it bottoms out because if you try to do it to a pencil mark each time so they're the same depth you're just going to get frustrated, you're going to overdo it and you'll spend all that time to cut the pieces and it'll be super frustrating that you uh, have to go out and cut another one again when you're almost done. Alright, so I drove a, uh, an extra down into the mortising uh, tendon jig there and now I got my old one that's the same shoulder as I want and so I cut this off right here and then I'm going to take that plug I'm going to stick it into the jig and that'll keep the pieces so they all come out the same length as this when I drive them in there. Cut my handy japs off and just cut her off. Place that into the jig, push her all the way down, and then uh, plug your jig in again, and check it to see if it's right. Perfect. To make the same depth. Now I'm ready to roll. Alright, now that you got your stop in place and you're ready to go, and you got your pieces shaved down so they'll go in there, because if they're too big they won't start well and they'll yank out of your hands. And if it does try to yank free, set it to the side, take it outside, shave a little more of it off, and come back in. Don't fight it, because that's a good way to get hurt. Now, you want to hold on to this thing solid. You're going to stand there, you're going to place it against your hip, hold it solid here and hold it solid here and just lean into it. Don't move it with your hands. Just try to lean into it nice and slow, holding it straight. There's some leeway here because uh, things will shrink because you're doing this with green wood and uh, you'll be able to, with, once they're all pegged together, a little a little bit of crookedness won't matter, but you'll get a hang of it. If they end up super crooked, you might have to go recut another one. Remember to pull them out as soon as they bottom out on your stopper so they don't stay in there and get wee wad and get, uh, get shaved down too thin. And sharp tool, big shavings, dull tool, lots of little tiny shavings. Keep your tools sharp. To see the completion of this project, skip on over to part two and thanks for watching.